Hello everyone, Leanne here. I hope you're doing well. Today is a day that I am sharing with you my current fountain pen collection. I've whittled it down to, um, I would say a curated collection where I feel like each pen I really appreciate. Um, with the exception of maybe three pens where I'm still not sure if I'm going to hold on to them. So uh, really quick, I just want to show you my fountain pen storage. These are all of my options here. Um, this is the 20 pen case uh, by Galen Leather. And typically I only keep my uninked pens, my clean and uninked pens in here for storage. But today I actually have all of these pens inked. Um, so it's just a nice convenient way to house all of them at once. But typically I have anywhere from about two pens to eight pens that are inked. And so I have them in these combinations. And this is from um, very early on. This was like the first pen storage that I got. Um, and this is a Galen leather pouch, <laughs> undyed leather. It's a, the zip and slip, slip and zip um, for pen storage. And you can see it's gotten a little bit more weathered. It's been loved. Uh, there's like a slight ink stain, water stain. And uh, I think that's what I just love so much about undyed leather is it ages, it gets older, it develops a character um, as time passes. And so I still have this. I don't think I'll ever get rid of this one here. So here's this. And then I, after that, I acquired these two. These are found, these are pen pouches um, made by Hurlstone, and they are a small business based out of New Zealand. And um, I do have to say that this one right here is a favorite, a favorite of mine. It's got an ink stain. I love the color combination. You get to decide what fabric and and what sort of color combination you wanted. And uh, these are all upholstery fabric so they're really durable out of the two this one is my favorite um, it's a two pen pouch it's got an additional little uh, pouch here or a little slit here in the back to put in extra pens so typically I'll have usually two of my nicest pens in here and then in the back I'll put some of my ballpoint pens like my uniball jet stream uh, some of my friction pens um, back here oh yeah I didn't never notice this but in the back of this tag it says New Zealand made so this one in particular is probably my favorite uh, pen storage solution and these uh, pens in here are the pens that I am really considering or are really planning to to sell to get rid of um, by the way this is a hashtag created by Corey Penventory and I've been meaning to record a fountain pen collection video. And after she had shared her hashtag, I thought it was a good time for me to also um, participate. And it has been over a year and I have been meaning to do a yearly fountain pen collection. So, so here we go. Oh, and one more thing. This is the uh, Superior Labor uh, pen pouch or pen roll made out of just this beautiful green leather here uh, in, in collaboration with Yoseka. And this pen roll currently houses my vintage pens. Uh, as of today, this is September of 2023, I have 16 non-vintage fountain pens that are officially in my collection. I also have six vintage fountain pens Four of them were gifted to me and two of them I purchased on my own. But as you can tell, I have a certain aesthetic. I like reds and greens. And if you look at my non-vintage fountain pen collection, I certainly have a type. And I think this is what's really fun about uh, you know, creating a fountain pen collection video is I have them all organized. I have them all laid out all together and I get to see as I re as I arrange them, um, you know, just seeing them all together, I get to see what my tastes are when it comes to fountain pens. And you can certainly see that I have a certain aesthetic that I lean towards. And it is seriously just like your, 
neutral black classic or white um, and especially the combinations of rose gold uh, accents are definitely something that I really really enjoy uh, and then if you look over here um, I am leaning my most recent pen acquisitions are like these three and you know they they take on more of a floral uh, sort of you know, design aesthetic to them. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of the lay of the land. You see some greens here. I have this one that I received as a gift from a dear friend of mine. So why don't I go ahead and get started with this pen. This is the Lamy All-Star. I have this because it was the very first pen that I bought uh, when I tumbled down the fountain pen rabbit hole. It originally had a fine nib, but now I have it housed with, or I currently have the Han cursive nib, and that has been really fun to play with. To be honest, I don't go to this pen often. Uh, the only reason why I have it in my collection is because of the sentimental value. It was the very first pen that got me into this hobby. And um, I'm still wondering if I should just get rid of it. If I don't go for this pen in the next six months as much as I would like to, then I actually might um, sell this pen. Uh, the Lamy All-Star is made out of aluminum instead of their ABS plastic that Safaris are made out of. I do like how it has like a slightly translucent grip section and it's got like a triangular, it's got these little indentations to help help you to hold your pen a certain way. Something that I do like, but then also it can bother me sometimes to tell you the truth. So uh, in my first and only other fountain pen collection video, I had three or four, three uh, Lamy pens. This was the All-Star and then I had, I think three, three safaris and since then I've sold them all and this is the only Lamy that I have today. Why don't we go over my Twisby collection. It's probably been featured in a lot of my most recent videos and this is the Twisby Diamond Mini in uh, white and rose gold. This is in the uh, fine nib and I currently have this inked in uh, Yoseka Ceramics Tang Misa Blue. And I don't typically like to write with lighter inks, but for some reason, Tang Misa Blue just happens to be um, an ink that I really have enjoyed writing with, as light as it is. It's probably the lightest ink that I have. Go to these Twisby Minis. After I got this Twisby Mini, then I purchased these two. This is the Twisby Diamond Mini, and this is in a fine nib. And this currently has Yoseka's uh, Origin Green ink. And because Twisbees are known to just be very reliable and uh, just a very reliable, consistent writer, um, I decided to house, or I decided to ink up uh, shimmer inks in this Twisby because it's a 1.1 stub nib. And this one currently has uh, Weringal Othello. Now the regular Twisbees, these are the Twisby Ecos. This is a Twisby Eco white with rose gold trim. And this is an EF nib, extra fine. And I have uh, Diamine Ancient Copper in here, one of my favorite inks. Then I have the Twisby Eco. This is a clear demonstrator with a fine nib. And um, what, which one is in here? Is it Weringal? Weringal Kyunghee. This is one of my favorite sort of golden yellow autumn inks. That's Weringal Kyunghee. And then I have uh, this Twisby Eco in black and it's an extra fine nib and it's currently inked with Diamine Holly, one of my favorite inks ever. Kind of, uh, it was an unexpected ink. I didn't know that I would enjoy it so much, but uh, I love it because it's saturated and it has just a beautiful subtle sheen to it. 
This is a Platinum Century 3776 Shape of Heart. I follow Scripta Puella and uh, she was selling this and I bought this from her. Um, and this is one of my favorite, favorite pens. It's just such a joy to behold. And wow, look at look at the sun making its appearance right now to just highlight how gorgeous, how brilliant this pen is. It's got rose gold detailing. It's a gold nib and it's a 14 karat gold nib and it's a fine nib. And I currently have this inked with um, Architecture Infinite Cube by Wearingall. It's a really beautiful brownish burgundy ink that has a, a nice subtle sheen. Really pretty. So this is a gold nib. The rest here are, are all steel nibs, stainless steel nibs. I guess the other two here are also gold nibs. This is a Sailor 1911 Standard 1911S. And I bought this on eBay, I believe. It's pre-loved. You can see that it's got some purple ink in here. Uh, this one is currently inked with Robert Oster's Cosmic Swirl. And this is 21 karat gold. And this is in a broad nib. And I don't have a lot of broads. In fact, this may be my only broad pen. Um, and I absolutely love the way the Sailor broad pens or the Sailor nibs write. Um, absolutely love it. And last but not least, I have the Pilot Custom 823. I bought this on uh, the virtual pen show. I love the feel of this resin. It's got like a, I'm not, it's hard to say, but I mean, it's hard to really describe it, but it feels like there's a softness to this plastic. It's not like a hard, plastic if you know what I mean it's not like ABS plastic but somehow it's got some sort of softness to it that even though it is absolutely hard um, there's just a nice grip to it um, it's hard to explain but here in the Sun I wonder if the video can capture it it's um, slightly translucent the body is and it's a vacuum fill. And I currently have this inked with platinum mixable inks in earth brown. And this is 14 karat gold in a fine nib. One of my favorite, favorite pens. Okay, and as we move to the right side, here we go. I wanna highlight this pen this was a gift to me by my friend Taryn, and it's the Sailor Pro Gear Mini. And what I love about this, and I don't know if the camera can capture it, is just the finials. It's got a subtle sort of glimmer, or there's also glitter particles in the finial. And it's uh, just a very, very subtle peachy pinky color on the ends and then the plastic this resin here it's got a nice matte finish with gold detailing it's just a very elegant cute pen oh this one is currently inked with sailor shikiori tokiwamatsu in one of the cartridges i bought a little box of um, this particular ink and i liked this ink so much that i ended up buying a bottle of it and this ink is also in my newest pen. I have a video where I unboxed and filled it with Sailor Shikiori Tokiwamatsu. Uh, really, really beautiful. This is a stainless, this is a steel nib. I believe it's a steel nib. It's definitely not gold. And this is in a fine. So this one is a uh, gold nib. Let's see, let's do the other gold nib. And this is the Pilot Custom 743 in Verdigris. This was a pen that I got um, because of your support using my affiliate code. Because of your support, I was able to get this pen. And um, I think just to, to commemorate or to honor everyone's support, I wanted to get a pen 
that was outside of my typical, and I would say this is my typical, outside of my typical color scheme aesthetic. And I wanted to get something that um, I would consider getting a fountain pen enthusiast friend as a gift. You know, something that they wouldn't typically get for themselves. You know, these are probably a more practical um, you know, this is more practical. Like these are pens that can be inked in any color and the color combination isn't going to bother me one bit. Whereas this pen, it's green. It's a beautiful green. It's a US exclusive. And this is a pen that I got from Atlas Stationers, one of my favorites. And for fun, I ink this up with Pilot Iroshizuku Konpeki. It's an ink that I actually don't really use often, but uh, in a way I'm going back to my beginner roots when I first started. It was one of the first inks that I bought. You know, I think a lot of beginners in, um, maybe not even just beginners, but those who have been in the fountain pen hobby for a long time have tried or own Pilot Iroshizuku Kompeki. And uh, I, I wanted to ink this um, custom 743 in an Iroshizuku ink. And Kompeki's are known to, Kompeki is known to be just a, a really reliable, beautiful, um, well-behaving blue ink. This is a Caveco Bronze Sport. And it's currently, well, it's a fine nib and I currently have it inked with Colorverse Smoky Bourbon. And I think the color combination is really nice. Um, to be honest, I am not sure if I'm gonna hold on to this pen. I bought it because of the hype and because from, from just looking at it, I really, really love this pen. However, it is very heavy and I haven't seen, I haven't found a comfortable way for me to hold the pen as I write. So um, I'm gonna have to play with this pen a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna make a decision in the next three to six months and decide, decide if I'm gonna keep it or if I'm gonna sell it. But for just looks alone, I love this pen. And I think the Caveco Classic Sport Silhouette is really fun. Um, very trendy it's just really the design is just so beautiful i love it so much but i just don't know if my hand um, loves it as much when i write with this pen so this is a to be continued but currently i have it in my collection because i i just think it looks so beautiful okay last but not least this is my traveler's company brass pen and uh, it's in a, did I, is it in a fine nib? I forget what I did. I ended up buying a nib replacement because the original nib that it came with wrote, uh, I, I didn't really like it. And so I bought this nib replacement um, on Jet Pens and it says Schmidt Iridium Point. It might be a fine or a medium. It might be a medium actually, but uh, this is one of my favorite pens. Um, it's a pen that I can toss in my bag. Also, the way that I naturally hold pens, uh, this pen allows me to write um, with my natural pen grip. I'm able to hold it, because uh, when, I, when I typically write, um, I write more upright. Uh, and with a lot of these fountain pens, I've trained myself to hold it in the, the correct or proper way. Um, but with this pen, I found that I can just kind of revert to my the way that I have been writing with a writing implement, a, ut a utensil for all these many years. Um, and it's just really comfortable. And I have this inked with one of my current favorites and it's Diamine Green Umber. And oh my goodness, how can I forget this pen? This is my Esterbrook Esty in Botanical Garden. I have this in the journaler's nib. It is my one and only Esterbrook, and this is in a, well, this is a journaler's nib, and apparently it's a medium nib that they ground down. Um, so it's like a fine, to me, my experience of it is like a fine stub, um, like a point, I don't, I don't even want to try to guess, but it just feels like a, like a, a finer stub than like a, 
um, than like a 1.1 stub, for example. But I've really enjoyed uh, writing with this pen. Um, it's got a nice wet flow. And I currently have this inked with Linen Toolbars Wolfberry. Absolutely love it. I love the design of the resin. Um, and I have a video talking about uh, the reason why I chose Botanical Garden. But the quick story is that it just reminds me of um, my mom, um, as she is such an avid gardener, and I feel like as I've gotten older, I'm really starting to respect uh, the art and the art of gardening and also just how life-giving it is to be out in nature. Um, so anyway, this is the Esterbrook SD. So these are all steel nibs except for, let's see, these three, the Platinum 3776 in Shape of Heart, the Sailor 1911 Standard, Pilot Custom 823 in Smoke, uh, my Sailor uh, Pro Gear Slim Mini. I'll have to, I'll, I'll put the proper name um, on, on the screen. This one is a gold nib, my Pilot Custom 743, and I think that's it. These are steel. Yep. Looks like all of my gold nib pens are Japanese. And then in my Yoseka pen roll by the Superior Pen or Superior Labor Company, um, these are the two vintage pens that I purchased myself. This is the Pelican 140. <laughs> I bought this after watching Karina. Um, talk about her first vintage pen and it was this one. I'm so happy with this pen. I love it so much. It's a really juicy wet writer and um, I also love this sort of the shade of green. Pelican 140 and then this one here is a Conway Stewart 36 from the 1950s. I bought this on the virtual pen show and I bought it because I love the way that the finials look. And I love the shade of green, it's so beautiful. These four pens were pens that I received as a gift from my neighbor Tina. And out of the four, I would say this is probably my favorite. This, this sort of striated pattern, um, absolutely love it. This is a Schaefer Lady Lifetime Balance in Carmine Red. I love the little white dot on the cap. And just it's just so pretty. And what I just realized too is this uh, pen nib has a heart punched out in uh, for the breather hole. Uh, that must be where the Platinum 3776 Shape of Heart got their inspiration from. Just made that connection. This is a Parker Duo Fold Senior from the 1930s. And this writes like a stub nib. It is, I believe they're all gold. Back then it was all gold nibbed pens. And then this was my neighbor's favorite. And actually this is a beautiful writer. This is the Parker 51 Aerometric. And this is, writes like a, like a broad, like a juicy medium to a broad. And last but not least, this is my oldest pen from the 1920s. Oh, this is a Parker Lady Duo Fold in the color Jade. And you see that it's got this loop up here so you can either string it as a necklace um, and wear it around your neck, I believe. These are all uninked, so I won't be doing writing samples with these, but this is my vintage pen collection. So if you add this six plus the 16, I have a total of 22 pens. I forgot to mention, these are the pens that I am going to be giving, well, giving away is not the correct term. I'm gonna be selling them. And I'll talk about why I'm going to be getting rid of these particular pens. It's four pens right now. Prior to these four pens, I've already gotten rid of so many, such as my Vanishing Point, my Pilot E95S, um, all of my Lamy Safaris. Uh, I also got rid of my um, 
gosh, I don't remember right now, but I'll just provide a, a snapshot of the, of the pens that I ended up getting rid of over the years. Um, if you looked at my first fountain pen collection video, you'll see that uh, the majority of those pens I no, I no longer own. This is the Pilot Falcon. It is part of my original fountain pen collection. And in the past year and a half almost, I've only inked it up twice, three times possibly. And the reason why I got it is because it is a soft flex. It's got a flex to this nib and I just don't reach for it very often. Um, as beautiful as it is, um, I don't reach for it. And so I'm going to get rid of this pen. This is uh, the Terra Nishi fountain pen. And I got it when I was obsessed, and I still currently am um, obsessed with and in love with the Terra Nishi line of inks, especially, especially Opera Rose. And so I wanted to try out their fountain pen. It is nice. Um, I think it's made out of brass. And it looks wonderful. It's just, it's, it's just got a writing experience um, that I don't really tend to, it's not that I don't enjoy it, but I just don't reach for this pen as often as I would like to. I do like my Twisby Ecos. Uh, this is a black rose gold, but it's in a broad nib. And I found that Twisby broads are a particular nib width that I don't, don't really enjoy using. Um, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of this broad nibbed Twisby Eco. I would I would have kept it if I had it in a fine nib or even in a medium. You know what? I've never even tried a Twisby medium nib. Um, but if it was an extra fine or a fine nib, I would have kept it. It's just that I don't I don't really write I don't like the writing experience of using a Twisby broad. And this pen is a pen that I really wanted to love because after getting rid of my Pilot Vanishing Point in matte black, I wanted to look for a replacement matte black fountain pen. And I really wanted this to work, but for some reason it just didn't work well for me. I think it's the feel of the aluminum pen body. I actually prefer my iridescent Caveco Classic Sport, which I've since sold, but I would have preferred writing with that pen versus this pen. And this was in a bold or this was in a broad nib and I didn't like the broad nib writing experience. So what I'm learning is that at least in the case of these two kinds of pens, um, I don't like broad nibs. I do like, like my Sailor 1911 standard, but not these broads, unfortunately. So these are the four pens that I am currently going to be selling. There you have it. These are my pens, uh, my current fountain pen collection. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me in my journey. It's been a little over a year since I started my channel. And since then, it has been such, such a wonderful experience. Meeting so many new people, connecting with folks through this medium, through YouTube, and also through Instagram. Um, I am just so happy to be a part of the Fountain Pen community. So once again, thank you so much for watching um, and take care. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.